Kia ora, and welcome back to Sloan Ranger Studio. We've got our Night Lords back on the painting table today. It's just part two, and it's going to be the last of the parts. We're just going to do all of the rest of the model today, because it's only just a couple of details left, so it shouldn't be too hard. We've got, we've got some bone, we've got some steel, we've got some fur, and a little bit of red. Now I reckon we'll make that like a Blood Angels, a Blood Angels helmet on the trophy rack as well. Uh, just because the red looks so good with all the other colors. So yeah, it's gonna be a pretty basic video It's all recipes that you're pretty familiar with but uh, hopefully the, the the technique that I'm using and you know The ways I do things opens up some doors for yourself when it comes to your own painting So if you like my content, please like and subscribe and uh, you know if you feel like supporting me as well I have patreon uh, my content will always be my content will always be free But uh, you know patreon's just there if you feel like shouting me a coffee or uh, you know Shoving me a brush now and then uh, but Yeah I hope you like this video. Uh, let's get into it, eh? Happy painting. Hey, hey, so here's our Night Lords where we left them. So we've got that, you know, gold trim and the blue armor all looking good, but there's still so much black on here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to go through all of the different base coat colors, and that way we can identify what kind of uh, washes or what kind of shades we want to use. Um, you know, I already know what I'm going to use, obviously, because this is my tutorial, but I think that, uh, you know, doing all of your base coats in one step is a really good way to kind of get an overall impression of how the miniature is going to look. Uh, so, you know, when you're starting a new project, or even if, you know, it's an existing one, I still think that putting all of those base coats down when you get started is a great approach. So, I'm going to get started with some of the lighter colors, so I'm going to look at all this bone detail first. And so, you know, we've got a few skulls and a couple of horns on this guy, so... I'm using Rackarth Flesh for this, which is a nice pale kind of off-white, and uh, you know, I'm just going to go around and identify where all of those kind of areas are, and I've thinned this down just a smidge um, because I don't want to clog up any details with these white paints, and I'm also being super careful not to get any of this Rackarth Flesh all over our lovely blue and gold. So. Yeah, we've got some skulls there. We've also got these horns up here. So, just being very careful not to slip. Nice. Softly, softly, basey coaty. And yeah, we've got these horns up top here as well. So, go around and add that rack off flesh all of the bone areas uh, and we'll come back for the next base coat cool so we got that Brackarth flesh base coat on there so two thin coats of that got me a nice coverage of Brackarth even over black which is sometimes quite challenging uh, but next thing we're going to do add some warmth we're going to take a little bit of Mephiston red which is a lovely you know saturated red base coat and we've got a couple of places where we want to put this red so we've got this cloth up underneath this claw this kind of loin cloth area so we're going to make that red. And, uh, you know, this red is going to really work together with everything else. It's going to look great. So yeah, we've got to be very careful in here. This is why I'm doing this part before we do the uh, the, the metal because we're going to going to get sorry we're going to get these claws in the way of this cloth. So if I do the cloth first, then uh, if I get a little bit of red on them while I'm while I'm doing it then it's not so bad because I can base coat over the claws so uh, yeah that's it I guess that's a pretty good tip when it comes to base coating as well as um, you know work work outwards because yeah you can always uh, touch up those those elements on the outside of the mon the miniature a lot easier than you can the ones on the inside so yeah we've got that bit of red and obviously do the back but we've also got this uh, this blood angels helmet up the top here so I'm gonna give this thing a nice generous coat of red Neat. So go around and uh, yeah, if you find anything else that you want to make red, go ahead. But I'm pretty sure that's it on this guy. Uh, yeah, we'll probably do the uh, the eye lenses red as well. So if you're feeling like doing that with your your base coat brush, go ahead. Just a couple little thin strips of red on those eye lenses for now. Cool. So that red's on there now. And while that's drying, I'm going to move on to the next base coat, which is going to be just some black areas and so 
we've got all this fur kind of draped over here and what, I, I don't really want this to kind of pull away from any of the other elements so I'm gonna leave it quite dark um, so by dark I mean I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be painting it black <laughs> yeah so I'm gonna paint it black and we're just gonna highlight it with some kind of dull browns some Skaven blight or something like that and so we've got black we'll thin it down a little bit and we're just going to go around and touch up all of this black area here and the reason we're painting black over black is because uh the the finish of an acrylic versus you know the primer is uh going to match the rest of what we're painting you know so while we've primed it black and it, it already is black it's going to look a little bit matte you know it's going to have that very kind of like primer finish it's going to have that kind of dusty that dusty look uh, it depends on the primer of course but in the case of the primer I use yes it's gonna have like a much more matte finish than the rest of the colors that I'm using so yeah I'm just touching up some of these areas and there's a few other things that you could touch up along the way as well if you feel like it you know you know I've got to make that black there so we can clean up some of that area where we slipped with the gold uh, some of these other areas are gonna be steel so we can leave those for now but yeah I've got all that fur so feeling good about that so that's that black base coat done might as well just move on to the next step while we're here which is just going to be the metallics and so i've got iron iron warriors yeah iron warriors not iron hands iron warriors steel which is a very very dark steel and we're going to be you know we'll just thin it down ever so slightly and we're looking at these like claws here get those nice and sparkly uh but we've also got you know some chains these chains that are connecting this skull here I'll give that a coat I'd also like these coils along the side of his power fists here to be metallic so just giving him a light coat uh, and of course this chain mail I want that to be steel so give that a nice coat and the last thing, oh, maybe not the last thing, we've got this as well. This piece on this chest, we'll make that steel. And this little, little like, mouth grill, let's make that steel as well. So, yes, last, last, now it's the last thing, which is this trophy rack. So, going to carefully put some steel, it's iron warriors, on this trophy rack. So, being careful not to, uh, slip and get it on our our bone or our blood angels helm so yeah go around and put on this uh this this black and steel base coat on the areas left in the mini and that's going to be pretty much everything left we can come back for the next step which will be a wash cool so there's all our base coats done uh, so next thing obviously is going to be adding in a wash and so I'm using known oil for pretty much all actually for all of these elements so I've got known oil and I've got a little bit on my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna carefully push known oil up into these like talon areas you know like washes can be a really fast step if you're uh, you know you're, you're working on a on a big army or something like that but on something like a Night Lord's Terminator, you want to be a little bit more careful, right? This guy's been around for like 10,000 years. So what I'm doing is I'm just pushing the, the null up into where, uh, you know, to, up towards the knuckle. And that's going to give us a, a nice, a nice blend when it comes to it drying. Because it's going to settle, settle where we leave the most, the majority of the, uh, the wash. So... You know, you can kind of come back and check in on it, make sure that it hasn't, you know, moved around too much. And if that's the case, just, you know, just gently, just gently nudge it, nudge it back into where you want it. It's really hot here in Wellington today, so it's going to dry really fast. And when it comes to these uh, other elements, like these, sorry, was any of that in focus? My word. Push it up. Push it up. Sorry, I'm so bad at, like, pulling the miniature out of out of view and then when it comes to these coils you know I'm just kind of giving it a nice even even coat again being quite quite gentle you know softly softly washy washy and then you know we've got this like red cloak under here so I'm giving that a nice generous coat 
but again making sure that I'm pushing it into the recesses so you know, it's got a nice fold in the bottom here so I'm pushing pushing that wash into the recesses same with this one under here yeah because it's on such a steep angle if you just leave it it will all just run down but if you kind of guide the wash a little bit more you can kind of do what you want a little bit to a degree gravity's still gonna do its thing and then uh you know we've got our bone areas so again i'm pushing pushing that paint down into like the brow i'm putting a spot into the eye socket you know, I'm dragging dragging that paint pushing it down to where I want it to be most intense letting it kind of fall off the top of the skull and uh, pushing it down into like yeah these kind of areas by the brow and these are areas by the teeth yeah, here's a good example and if you pull it down towards the base of the skull you let it settle in the recesses you want it rather than just kind of slapping it on and hoping that it settles where where it should sometimes it doesn't always happen and you end up with big pulling areas and areas you didn't think you would get so yeah just take your time push that push that wash around make it do what you want and by you know by creating this continuous like direction with your wash it helps it all uh, you know fit together as well because everything looks like the lights coming from the same direction and the reason we're using known on this bone is because we want it to look like quite you know bleached not like a rotten rotten bone that you might find on like an orc or something like that now this has been like you know this has been intentionally bleached and you know hung as a trophy so yep same with this blood angels hip helmet here so we're just pulling pulling that wash down into these recesses pulling it down into the undersides where the light isn't going to get quite so much and then what do we got there oh the trophies yes so the trophies i mean this is these are pretty self-explanatory you just kind of you just kind of whack it on and let it because these are these, this is definitely what gravity is going to have a play on with these trophy rack bits because it's just a big vertical spike so the wash is definitely going to fall down whether we like it or not oh try not to get it on your gold if you do quickly quickly dry it off dry off the brush and take take off what you just spilled cool and i think that's my friend at the door so i'm going to leave it there and uh we'll come back when that's dry cool so those washes have dried now so what we're going to do is we're going to come back and start highlighting and so the first color I'm going to start doing this with is I'm just going straight back to our Rakar flesh and I'm just thinning this down a little bit more than we did for our base coat. I'm just taking a little bit on the tip of a smaller brush. We're just going to start highlighting up. So just pushing, pushing some of this thin Rakar back up towards the higher areas of the bone. You know, top of the skull, you know, the brow, top of the nose. And because this is thin, you can just build it up over a couple of coats. Have some little stipples and scratches here and there. Give it a nice old texture. So up on these ones on the top here. So, yeah, looking at drawing some attention to those areas. Like the, yeah, the ridges of the, the brow. And also towards the top of the skull here. So because it's thin, it blends kind of nicely. But of course, you know, we're not too fussed on that. A little bit of texture on our bone, not going to hurt us. So pick out, pick out all of those kind of raised areas. And when it comes to these horns here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just going to drag some thin lines down towards the the front of the the horn there so you can see those thin lines that I've added and you know you might want to build this up over a couple of layers get those looking a little bit brighter that's just gonna look like you've got some ridges in that bone 
well not just a smooth horn you know it's a little more feels a little bit more organic and by pulling it towards one point you can see how the you can see how the paint will collect where you pull it towards that gives us a nice little uh, blend as well so yeah work your way around and you know build up that rack half over a couple of thin coats to start you know highlighting back up this bone okay so we've gone back and highlighted up with that thin coat of rack half well, we did it a couple of times and you know you can see how it helps the transition so the next thing we're going to do is mix in a little bit of white to our rack half you can see this mixture i've got going here and we want to thin this down as well so a nice generous amount of water in there as well you know looking at something quite thin like so and it's the same thing really only this time you know much less of a surf much less surface area and we're just uh, you know pushing this pushing this paint up towards our high areas a couple little dots on the corners of certain certain areas of the skull like uh you know the uh the very corner of the eye socket like there you know these like particularly you know pronounced cheekbone ridges and you know we're, same thing as well we're just pushing up towards these higher areas of the spherical side of the skull which i find the most like difficult part to highlight but you know if you just Keep your paint thin and build up towards towards the top. You can see how it uh, see how you can get a nice nice blend going by just yeah just building up thin coats. So yeah, follow the same process, just working your way around with that you know with that white mixed into our rack earth now, and you can see how it jumps up a step. And uh, that'll be it for the bone, and then we can move on to the next thing. Rightio, so there is our bone highlighted up, and you can see that's looking like a nice quality bleached bone. I'd definitely wear that bone as a trophy if I had it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight these black areas because I'm just starting to feel a little bit sick of seeing black on the miniature. So all I'm going to do is take a little bit of Skaven Blight Dinge, which is a uh, kind of a brown grey. Yeah, it's just like grey with a hint of yellow in it. It's quite nice. Um, good for good for highlighting a, a dirty black. Um, probably seen that on a lot of Citadel recipes. What we're going to do with this is we're just going to, with this the edge of our brush, we're just going to start highlighting up this fur area. And so, you know, we're just kind of edge highlighting here. We just, you know, when it comes to edge highlighting, you don't want too much on your brush and you want it to be nice and thin. And you want to use the edge of your brush. Yo, yo. And because it's thin, we can do it over a couple of coats and it builds up. And that's what we want. We want this to kind of look like it's, uh, you know, it's picking up the light on the top here. The top hairs and the bottom hairs are, uh, you know, kind of obscured by the hairs above them. And that's what gives it that, like, layered look, which is um, quite sexy. So, yeah, work, work your way around edge, highlighting all this fur with your, uh, your Skaven Blight Dinge. You can see it's starting to give a bit of life to that fur but like i mentioned before we don't want it to to take away anything we don't want it to over overtake any other aspect of the model so sorry i'll get that back into the shot there so yeah a couple of thin coats building up towards the top part of the hair you can see i'm i'm dragging the edge of my brush towards the top of the hair here i'm not going towards the bottom of the hair you know i'm not going towards the tapered end i should say Every now and then, you know, you can't get your you can't get your brush in there for an edge. And in those cases, just do your best to uh, get a nice fine highlight along the the um, the edge of the fur there. You know, like some of these ones in here are a little bit tricky to get my brush into. But yeah, just do your best, and then we'll come back for the second round of highlights for that fur. Okay, so the next step for highlighting that black is uh, the next step up from that paint you know and the, the, the g-dub chart which is storm vermin fur which is just a lighter one so again we're just thinning it down a little bit you know probably like a 50 50 of paint to water 
or maybe not quite that much, maybe a little bit less. Uh, you can sort of see the consistency I'm talking about here. So it's got a trace of the color, but it's transparent enough. And we're trying not to have too much on our brush and trying not to have tiny little bits of fluff stuck in our brush. Damn you. And uh, yeah, a little bit on the very tip. And the same thing, just uh, edge highlighting up towards the top and being brighter, trying to take up less, less surface with this step than we were in the previous step. Yeah, you can feel that fur coming to life now. It's feeling less like a block of, you know, unpainted, unpainted mini, which is what we want. And you know, something I like to you know, teach people is when it comes to edge highlighting is uh, keep your brush moving in the same direction, but move the miniature. And it just kind of helps, you know, remove the chances of error when it comes to having your brush at the right angle you know if you just if you just keep your brush moving in this same the same movement here but you rotate the miniature to fit then you can uh, you know main, make sure that you've got a consistent pressure on your brush you can make sure there's a consistent angle uh, yeah I think it's I think it's a really good tip when it comes to edge highlighting to just keep your keep your brush moving in the same direction move the miniature so yeah, work your way around, edge highlight uh, this fur with the uh, the brighter storm vermin. All right, so that fur is looking nice and highlighted now. So what we're gonna do is move on to the red. So what we're gonna do first things first is go back to Mephiston, right? And so very gently, we're just going to push a thin coat of Mephiston up towards the raised surfaces of this cloth. And uh, being being thin and being the, the original color we use, this will blend really nicely um, without you know much effort at all, really. And so the hard part here is uh, not having bits of fluff in your brush again. It's be really dusty here, uh, but also um, yeah, not getting not getting paint on other areas that you've base coated and highlighted, like this skull just down here. So I'm just carefully pushing a thin coat of my fist in up towards it might be easier to show on this like back part here but yeah, I'm just kind of pushing the paint towards where I want it to be brightest and then same thing on this uh, blood angels helm here so just pushing this thin coat of my fist in up towards the top of the helm here and being being careful not to uh, you know slip and get red all over my beautiful night Lord so yeah, it's starting to it's starting to feel pretty blood angelsy. Another coat of red there would be nice. Do it again over here. You know, two thin coats builds it up, builds up the blend a lot nicer. Just back here. Yeah, no, that's all looking good. All right. So yeah, a couple of thin coats of the red all around, then we'll come back for the next step. Next color we've got in the list is a evil sun scarlet so thin this down like we were doing with the uh, the browns for the fur what we want to do is just start just kind of stippling this stippling this red all over the fabric here and the stippling effect will help us uh you know register that it's a fabric and not an armor and i i, I quite like doing this for the various different textures on a miniature so where you've got fabric you know you can build up some strokes you know some some little uh, nicks and scratches and all sorts of stipples and whatnot, and it feels and it feels like it's got texture. You know, it feels like it's a fabric, and that's what we want. You know, because we've got this smooth blue armor and this kind of a uh, you know very heavy looking gold trim right next to it. Having the having the red have its own texture helps tell a tell a good story about the miniature. You know, like it's made up of all these different things it's not all uh, it's not just a plastic miniature anymore you know so yeah just building up building up some little little red nicks and scratches here and we're gonna do something different with the helmet though we're gonna keep this much smoother so yeah, just sort of building up these thin coats up towards where the white's catching this helmet at the top here something like that and, you know, pull out some edges while we're at it with this brighter red. If 
we're not careful this red will um you know take over the miniature because being a warm color it'll be the first thing you kind of spot when you're looking at it from a glance so we don't want to go too crazy with this bright red we want to keep a bit of mood in it so again just picking out some of these red areas some of these more pronounced edges give them a bit of an edge highlight like we were doing with the fur pushing this thin coat of evil sun skeleton towards the top so a couple of coats of that for the evil sun scarlet and then we'll be able to move on to the next color all right so a couple of coats of that evil sun scarlet and that red is looking very red last little step is to add a little coat of wild rider red which is actually a very orange color so i'm just going to thin it down like i have done with all the other layers so far you know kind of like a 60 40 of paint to water probably somewhere around there now this is a bit of a step from our red so very very light stipples and mostly along edges and where there's little cuts in the fabric little edges and you know, a couple of the little raised areas but yeah because this is orange it's going to start to it's going to start to dominate dominate our scheme if we're not careful yeah, it's a bit, a bit warmer than our red but it is a really nice way to highlight red without going into the pink um, yeah, I'm just going to leave that. So yeah, we're just picking out some edges. Picking out some edges of this red. You know, up along, up along that top bit there. Maybe just a nice, nice little, nice little push of the, uh, the orange into that top part there. It's going to look quite nice. Maybe just a little bit towards the top of this helmet here. Just pushing, pushing this orange into where we want it. Nice little pop of light right towards the, the front of the brow there. Maybe we'll highlight the inside there. Yes. Try not to slip. And if you do, wet your brush. Take off what you just added. Worst comes to worst, you can always just glaze in some black if you need to as well. But yeah, we're uh, we're pretty much done with our red here, so we're just we're just adding in some little edge highlights with this with this orange color and that's making our red look you know still pretty grim still pretty dark very neglected obviously this is a uh, dead blood angels helmet so probably not going to be polished anymore but uh you know we still want to still wanna obviously make it look like it's a blood angels helmet and not just some grimy grimy black thing that's been uh you know through the warp a hundred times so yeah i feel like that's looking where we want it to look it's not overtaking too much of our blue and gold so just a nice little easter egg up in the top there so we'll uh come back for the next step which is our steel all right so we're pretty much at the end of our night lords here we've just got a couple of things left so what i did with the uh the light the eye lenses as well i forgot to add so all i'm doing is this is pretty much the same process that i did with the with the uh the blood angels i'm just kind of lightly building up the red and oranges and I'm just dragging the paint towards one edge of the lens and then while I'm at it what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a tiny little bit of white thin it down I just want a little bit of white on the edge of our brush just in the corners of the lens just a little dot very very softly softly just a little dot in each corner of the lens and it just kind of looks like it's Reflecting a little bit of light. Easy as that. At a glance, that looks like it's a like a glassy lens. You could do like a glow as well if you wanted. Maybe we'll do that in another video sometimes, you know, glowing eye lenses. But anyway, so we're highlighting our steel now. So I've got some rune fang steel here. Now I've thinned it down with a bit of medium. And there's not too much steel here, so we can do this pretty quickly. We just I like to work in a very stipple fashion when it comes to highlighting steel and it looks like it's you know it's had a bit of had a bit of a life you know it's a bit, a bit worn but beaten you know so like towards the tips of these if you make it just kind of like even even uh, highlights and even strokes I feel like it looks a little bit artificial for metal you know your metal 
is so susceptible to to light and so any kind of imperfection it's going to pick up on you know so got this little bit of chain down here got this uh bit on his chest here so i'm just gonna do some little some little stipples along the top edge of that it's gonna highlight that nicely we got this chain down here can't forget that so just on the, the top edges of the chain nothing too nothing too special there for these uh, pipes along the power fist I'm going to take off most of the excess I'm just going to have like a nice little edge highlight of those just on the just on the surface well you know the the edge of the this pipe that's facing upwards you know I'm not um, highlighting it all the way around and I think that helps you know create the illusion of a of a light source above if we if we just keep our highlights to one direction So yeah, just adding those little edge highlights on those pipes there. See we're not doing the underside of them, just the top sides. And then we got this guy in the back here, so and then these here, and these are already quite irregular, so that makes it easy for us. Got a bit of a jagged, jagged line to them. Chainmail. Just Towards the towards the ends of the chainmail, because there's a bit of a ridge kind of casting a shadow on them. Something like so. Wash your brush regularly when you're uh, using metallic paint as well. Oh yes, of course we've got our claws. So these have got some nice pronounced edges, and so just a just a jagged a jagged highlight like that looks like it's very kind of sharp but nasty sharp you know like a like a very evil looking blade that uh, hasn't been taken care of and you know you're going to contract some sort of like tetanus from it or something that's what we want because that's terrifying you know and you can you can do some you can do some big big highlights as well if you want but yeah keep it Keep it irregular. That's what I'd. That's what I'd recommend. And then for the trophy racks, these have got nice edges, and it's going to be the same sort of approach. You know, kind of breaking the highlight up a little bit, make it look like it's just some old jagged, gross metal that you really don't want to touch. So yeah, that about covers it for the metal. I reckon go around, finish that off, and we'll come in for that last step we were talking about at the start of the video for tying that blue armor down a step. All right, so we've gone around and highlighted all those steel areas, and it's feeling very nasty. And ready to, you know, go and raid some imperial lackeys. I don't know. But our last step is to tie this blue down and. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is primarily because I forgot to mention it in the last video. <laughs> but what I'm going to do, right, is I've got this last color here, which is a Liquitex acrylic ink, the, uh, the Thalo Blue, which is a very deep blue. You can see over on the palette here how deep and dark it is. Now I'm thinning it down quite a bit because it's very strong. So you yeah. see, They're quite thin. And so all I'm doing is now just over some of these mid-tone areas, I'm just glazing this blue over top. You know, give the brush a bit of a look if you need to. But you can see how it transforms that blue just in that particular spot, just on the bum there. You can see how it transforms the blue really drastically. So a thin glaze of this blue all over the armor pushing it towards the recess areas where you can is just going to make that blue very very uh, deep and dark perfect for you know Night Lord's armor in my opinion so work your way around pushing a very thin coat you know you'll know immediately if it's too dark because it'll just like completely and utterly take over it's such an, a potent potent color these inks so very thin coat Glaze it over pretty much all of the armor, pushing it into the recessed areas and the shadow areas. Um, 
and uh, you, you might need to retouch retouch your white but to be honest it might also add a bit of a cool effect yeah it's actually a pretty cool effect so once that's ready we'll have our Night Lord's armor looking very very uh, deep and moody hey hey and there we are now Night Lord's figure is all done uh, so you know I've got I've got a lot of these to do for myself um, but you know I think that process isn't too bad you know once you get over the uh, the gold trim the blue armor everything else comes together very quickly I'm talking a thousand miles an hour sorry I will slow down but yes so we've got all of our elements working together there and I feel like it's you know it's got, still got the uh, the cool the cool deep moodiness of the night lords but we've thrown in some elements there that complement it quite nicely so as a scheme blue red gold can't really go wrong right uh, you know it's basically all the primary colors uh, you know it's working together I'm really happy with it so I hope you like it and I hope your night lords are coming out the way you want them uh, and I hope this video wasn't too you know long or tedious I know it was less of the fun stuff it was mostly just details but you know I think it I think it came together really nicely uh, you know I've got this little purity seal here and I've left that off because that's something for my own personal army um, so if you like my content, you know, please like and subscribe. Uh, you know, of course, if you feel like supporting me, I have Patreon, which you are welcome to join in on and, you know, shout me a coffee every now and then. Uh, my content will always be free, like I've said before. Uh, Patreon is really just there if you feel like, uh, yeah, through going the extra mile to support me. But I love you all, and I hope you have some happy painting ahead of you. And, uh, yeah, your Night Lords are coming along just as well. All right. See you next time, team. See ya.